Hey y'all, this is Brett and today I want to answer a question that's on a lot of my viewers' minds because I'm doing a parasite cleanse. And that question is, does fruit feed parasites or candida? And I mentioned that I'm not eating any fruit right now. And the reason is because it does feed parasites and it does feed candida. How do I know this? Well, the obvious reasons are the signs that I still totally crave fruit and not because it's like nutritionally beneficial for me, but I know because I have cravings at certain times, after the meal a little ways, um, like just like sugar cravings, not just fruits, but like if I want to eat some honey or maple syrup, something like that, then I get craving that. And think of it this way. It's easy to eat fruit. Kids eat fruit, you know. Um, alcoholics are all good with eating fruit. And fruit ferments and does create alcohol in the body. I've heard that there's actually an amount of alcohol in bananas. And, and so think about the things. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, but you've got to hear it anyway. Think about the things that you don't like to eat. Things that taste nasty. <laughs> Those are the things that the candida and parasites don't want to eat. They don't want any of that that's like bitter. Bitter and sour nasty foods. Now, actually, there is one or two fruits that you can eat on an anti-candida or parasite diet. Sour green apples. <laughs> there you go. Sour and green. Anything green is going to be more... The fourth chakra is green. And the fourth chakra is love. And love is hard. <laughs> And greens are harder to eat. Some of them are bitter and nasty like mustard greens or dandelion or arugula. Eat all that and just eat that for the next week and we'll see how you do. <laughs> Don't eat any carbs. Let's talk about things that feed candida and parasites. Anything sweet. They like that. Now I'm going to stop right there and we're going to talk a bit about the benefits of fruit and why it's taken me so long to really decide to stop eating it or be able to stop eating it. A fruit cleanses your body and fruit is the awesome, awesome substitute for getting off of wheat or dairy or meat and so if you have plans on getting vegan and really cleaning out your diet, then you got to get off of those things first and processed foods, obviously, and process, you know, like sugar and white flour foods. All flour foods feed candida, even non-glutinous grain flour foods like rice flour and millet flour, quinoa flour. Anything that's been turned into a powder is going to feed candida more. Now, whether or not I will actually achieve a raw diet in this lifetime, a fully raw, <laughs> for lack of a better word, <laughs> a fully raw diet in this lifetime, I don't know. We'll just see how it goes. But there are so many foods that just don't seem possible to eat raw that are really beneficial and that I don't believe that one that completely gets rid of those foods is going to do better than somebody that keeps them and eats them cooked. Now, um, let's see. So fruit has a lot of water in it. And so when you're doing a lot of cleansing, that's a huge thing for you. And when you're getting off of those other foods, the, the process of, of the feeding of the candida and parasites by the fruit is not that big of a deal compared to what you're doing 
to get rid of all those other foods. You have to take one step at a time. And it's going to be hell for people to get off of the wheat, meat, and dairy. And, you know, the fruit is going to clean out all that mucoid plaque in your digestive system. And when you've been eating those foods, you've got that. It's also going to clean out plaque and deposits throughout your body from all that meat, fat, and dairy, casein, and etc. And, and chemicals, you see, there's not, it's not just a matter of candida and or parasites. The other things are worse than those, even though those are really difficult and cause a lot of problems. And you will lose a lot of those anyway, just from the cleansing process of washing your body out. You're going to lose a lot of, of candida and parasites. But when you get down to a point of where you've really cleaned out your intestines well, and it's time to get on with it and really get some deep cleaning done, that's when you've really got to get rid of the fruit. And in a natural world, in an all-natural world, in a more perfect world, people will do the following things to achieve dietary perfection. And I have big plans for these things that I'm going to tell you right now. And that is food combining. Okay? Let's talk a bit about fruit and food combining. Fruit does not mix with anything. Not nuts or seeds either. And people eat it with nuts and seeds. But it doesn't digest well with nuts and seeds. And some of you may think that it does. But optimally, if you eat fruit by itself, as is recommended in any, almost any book that talks about food combining, then that's when it's going to digest the best and not ferment. Okay, you see, almost all of you are alcoholics. <laughs> I hate to tell you. <laughs> But if you crave eating food combinations that you know are going to create fermentation and gas, then you're creating alcohol in your fermentation vat, your gut, and your digestive system. And that's because you're needing to feed your bugs so that you can get through your day. Now, there is so much to talk about in these regards because <laughs> once again we really have to slow down and change our lifestyles especially when we're going through transition. And yes, after a person has rebuilt their digestive systems by eating sauerkraut and other foods that promote good acidophilus flora in our digestive systems, then we can go back to eating a moderate amount of fruit, especially when it's in season and using food combining. And if you want to see a great book on all of these things, then buy yourself a book called Healing with Whole Foods by Paul Pitchford. And you will learn a lot. You can even do a consultation with Paul on the phone as I have done in the past. But, I'm really getting all over the place with this, but food combining shows us that the food that combines, now remember this, the food that combines with the most other kinds of foods is vegetables. Okay, Vegetables are the ultimate food for people to consume. There's all different kinds of vegetables for you to eat that create all different kinds of applications in your body for you to, to learn about. And you need to really learn about all the different aspects of foods. And that book that I just mentioned, Healing with Whole Foods, talks a lot about that. Whether it's cooling or warming, the thermal aspect of the food, whether it's hot, aggressive, or, or gentle, or, or, you know, all the different aspects of food, whether it stimulates digestion more, or uh, whether it makes you want to cleanse more. And 
And so fruit is a good food up until a certain point. But remember that, that fruit does feed candida and parasites. And I don't care about all these raw foodists there that'll tell you the opposite and that they should that you should just eat bananas for two weeks or a month or something you know and get deficient in half your nutrients that just won't work and there are people that have accomplished a lot of things by just eating fruit but those people did not have parasitical and candida problems to begin with they may have been very overweight like freely for instance and a lot of other people but most of the people that you see that have succeeded on a raw food and or fruitarian diet were young to begin with and didn't have bug problems candida and parasites not at least deep systemic stuff or cancer or something like that because all of the anti-cancer anti-candida diets they all tell you that you have to stop eating sweet foods. A lot of them even tell you that you shouldn't eat any carbohydrates at all. Healing with Whole Foods does not. It says that you can eat some whole grains. Okay? But some other things to remember are that nuts and seeds can have mold on them. And it probably is good to wash them. You could wash them, you could soak them in salt water and or then dry them out in your dehydrator. That would be a good thing. I do that and they actually taste a lot better when you do that. Put some salt in the water when you, when you soak them overnight and then put spices all over the top. And now I'm going to talk about something that's just like required required that the raw foodists and and fruitarians hardly even mention <laughs> herbs do you know how many herbs that creation put on this earth for us to use to add to our cooked foods to utilize to kill off these bugs in this world where nothing is perfect um, Cinnamon is a culinary herb that you can add to fruit if you're still eating fruit, making your smoothies, etc. Cinnamon is anti-candida and it also stimulates digestion because it's got that hot quality to it. And whenever you do that, there are certain, these certain herbs that stimulate digestion like ginger and cayenne and cinnamon and mustard are are going to help you to absorb the nutrients better. Now it's also really great for you to mash the food using like a wet grinder like I've shown you in the past. And I haven't been showing you a whole lot on that because it's really, really advanced, I believe. <laughs> it really will push you because all of the things that you do I'm going to say this slow so that it just freaking ingrains into your brain. <laughs> All of the things that you do that advance you to a, a movement towards creation, God, Jah, Allah, <laughs> Buddha, <laughs> all of these things are going to be a trial for you. They're going to be, they're going to push you and it's not going to be easy. So any time that you make an advancement in absorbing nutrients, in eating something that's, that's more cleansing, more green, more bitter, more aggressive, and totally natural, even if it's eating something that's like a raw, uh, a, a, a wild food, You've never eaten wild food before and you're going to go on a wild food hunting trip today with a bunch of people and you're going to pick a whole bunch of it and you're going to bring it home and eat it. Well, guess what? That's going to push you. And then the next day you had plans for exercise and you're going to go do a yoga class and you wake up in the morning and you're like, beware that whenever you do something that in to increase your health, like 
reducing the electromagnetic fields in your house like I did a year ago and gradually increase that and I can continue to increase that. If you go out in the woods and you spend a month or two, you can better well expect that that's to, to feel the effects and that that is going to push you towards creation. And that's when you've got to stop. You've got to stop and really connect with the divine and find out what you need to do if you don't want to step back and go back to eating something that you used to eat, whatever it was, that you don't want to do it anymore, or go back to doing some activity that you really don't want to go back to, but you're like, oh, you're feeling desperate. It's like, oh, should I, should I call that woman that I really don't want to be with anymore just so that I can go get some sex? <laughs> Something like that. Or should I go back to eating that food that I don't really want anymore? There are a million things that you can step back to. You can, you can go back to bowling. <laughs> you can go back to watching aggressive sports on TV. You can listen to heavy metal again. <laughs> you can start smoking pot again. <laughs> it's getting dark outside. I hope you can still see me. So, yes, fruit does feed candida and parasites. You could go off of fruit and sweet things for, say, a week or two and see how you do, you know, how strong your organs of elimination are to be able to deal with the detox is going to determine largely and how strong your mind is and how able with your life set you are to just take time off and relax is going to determine largely how much you can push it. So if you free up a whole bunch of time and a whole bunch of say some money too, you need money to be able to do this because if you're not working maybe you're not making so much money. So you've got to get into a situation. So you really have to use the old noggin to be able to do this thing called cleansing and healing. And when you do, and you've been doing it for as long as I have, then you get to this point of where you really understand a lot more of things in this life because it forces you. It forces you to reality. And you have to only do the truth. You can My battery went dead. <laughs> you can meander off of the truth if you want to, just like you can go back to doing something that you didn't want to. You'll find that sometimes that you just have to. Because what you do, what you'll do is You'll get it in your head that you really want to push it. And you'll do that and it'll push you beyond your limits and then you'll have to step back. And you may lose your temper with people or all the bad things that we really don't want to do. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to end this video. I hope you are well and um, just take this healing thing one step at a time and know that it's a never-ending journey probably far beyond this lifetime.